This episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Mac Weldon. Well, it's our uh, first Tech News Day of 2021, brand new year. And since it's the beginning of the year, there's not a lot to talk about. I mean, it's just a slow news year. Uh, <laughs> we got, okay, like uh, Elon Musk, he's officially overtaken Jeff Bezos as the richest person on earth. He's got a net worth of over $180 billion dollars, wow. which is an insane amount of money. It's hard to even mentally visualize. Um, this guy here on TikTok did a pretty decent job visualizing Jeff Bezos' net worth back when it was a measly $120 billion using grains of rice, each worth $100,000. And uh, yeah, that's a whole lot of rice there. So just imagine that big pile of rice, but 50% uh, larger. <laughs> that's what Elon's got. Yeah. Uh, his net worth is now equal to about 1.8 million times the net worth of the median U.S. household. And he's still on Twitter, just shitposting still all day long. Still shitposting. Yeah, now let's see. Uh, what else? Um, oh, right, right at the end of uh, 2020, the folks over at Boston Dynamics, they decided to celebrate the end of the year with their most terrifying video yet, Ugh. featuring the entire Boston Dynamics road robot family. You got Atlas, Spot, and Handle all doing an elaborate choreographed dance to the classic song Do You Love Me? I hate this so much. Uh, they, they were obviously going for a fun vibe here, but uh, the result is more like the stuck in the middle with you scene from Reservoir Dogs. Uh, it's a catchy tune and the dance moves, they're certainly impressive, but to answer the question, no. No, we do not love you. No. We're very scared of you. Uh, I did a quick edit online with dancing on dead bodies, and that is e exactly what's going to happen with this. It's this, the future. This is the future roboticist one. They have that show. It was start with the mask singer, and then it was the mask dancer. And I assure you that one time the mask is going to come off, and it's going to be one of those Boston Dynamics robots, and the eye lasers are going to turn on and slice off all of the heads of the judges. Yeah. And that's the future we're going to live in because of Boston Dynamics. Thank you. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that fear of Boston Dynamics robots, it now extends from the battlefield to the dance floor. Nowhere is safe. Yeah. I feel very inadequate. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. We've covered all the tech news that happened since we've been gone. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. What else happened? Nothing. Yeah. No, I, there's a ton of news, actually. Yeah. Uh, I get, okay. We got to talk about Parler, the social media platform Parler, which launched in 2018 as a free speech alternative to Twitter. But it's, it's really just... Twitter for conservatives who want an echo chamber where they won't get suspended for hate speech or incitement to violence or spreading QAnon bullshit or anti-vax bullshit. Uh, it was funded and co-founded by Republican mega donor Rebecca Mercer, also uh, Dan Bongino. <laughs> He's one of the big investors of it. So yeah. it, it's, it's conservative Twitter. Yeah, over the last year or so, as Twitter has taken a much less hands-off approach to moderation, each new wave of suspensions has led to calls for conservative Twitter users to jump ship over to Parler. And well, uh, that sentiment has gotten uh, much more amplified and urgent now that Twitter has permanently banned Donald J. Trump and a bunch of other prominent conservative accounts. Now, we already, in our previous video, went over the events that led to this and the general timeline of how it went down, but here's a very, very quick recap. So last Wednesday, January 6th, the Senate and the Vice President convened to formally certify the results of the 2020 presidential election, which Trump definitely lost. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Trump held a rally nearby where he continued to claim that the presidency had been stolen from him. Uh, that rally ended with his huge, angry crowd of supporters marching straight down to the Capitol building, where many MAGA people forced their way inside, uh, often violently, uh, and many others were just let right in by police for some reason that I'm hmm. very curious about. Hmm. Both houses of Congress had to be evacuated to a safe area and the MAGA people roamed freely through the House chamber and many congressional offices, leaving a real mess in their wake, including literal piss and shit, before eventually being removed after what felt like way too long. And some of those safe spaces, not so safe, because I think if the count is like three now, uh, three people that got coronavirus by sheltering yeah. the people who refused to we'll wear masks. We'll talk about that in the COVID section of, <laughs> oh, our, oh, okay. of our good news show. Yeah. Or, oh, by the way, uh, one police officer was killed by the mob. Several others were injured by the mob. One member of the mob was shot to death trying to break through a locked area. And a few others died of heart attacks. Pre-existing pre -existing conditions. Pre-existing It's just like coronavirus. has had nothing to do with it. Doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, but considering how many in the crowd were clearly out for blood, carrying weapons and also chanting calls to execute lawmakers. This definitely could have gone a lot worse. And like we said before, thank goodness these people were very stupid. Yeah, that's, uh, we're lucky yes. that they were complete fucking dipshits. But, yes. Uh, you know. 
Like, like so, look, <laughs> tw- Twitter and Facebook, where a lot of the discourse and rhetoric that led to the storming of the Capitol happened, uh, they finally decided they should probably do something before this shit happens again. Yeah. Uh, so after the events of the Capitol, uh, President Donald J. Trump posted a video to Facebook and Twitter where he told the people who stormed the Capitol that he loves them and would like them to please uh, go home. Wink. But he also continued to insist that the election was stolen from him. Yes. And since the riots were a direct result of Trump's insistence over the last two months that the election was stolen from him, Facebook went ahead and removed that video and some other posts from Trump. And Twitter surprised everyone by actually locking Trump's account for 12 hours, literally putting the president of the United States, the most powerful person in the world, in the corner for timeout. Yeah, which literally was the most consequences he's ever faced in his life. Which Yeah. It's sad, but also hilarious because you know he's actually really upset. About I, I would have loved to be there in the room with him when he when he tried to open Twitter and got the the notification. Whew. Trump came back, of course, after deleting the tweets that got him temporarily suspended, and after posting some tweets showing support for his supporters and saying he wouldn't be attending Joe Biden's inauguration. Twitter correctly inferred that Trump was absolutely not going to stop insisting that his election loss was illegitimate and shocked everyone by permanently banning the president of the United States. Damn, what a day. Yeah. What a day. Now, as hilarious as it was, it only got funnier because Trump immediately logged into his actual official presidential Twitter account, which he rarely uses, at POTUS, and just picked right up where he left off (laughs) on his banned account. Uh, This is textbook ban evasion as they say. So uh, Twitter quickly locked down the POTUS account. We're just going to... You're done. Joe Biden, uh, he'll, he'll get it in a couple weeks, yeah. but POTUS is frozen. Uh, then Trump started posting from his campaign's account at Team Trump, which was also swiftly suspended. And then <laughs> he took over the account for his campaign's digital director, Gary Kobe, which was also swiftly banned. Who here's verified? <laughs> Give me your phone. Poor Gary doesn't have an account anymore. Yep, sorry, Gary. Meanwhile, over on Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg decided following the events of the Capitol uh, to shut down Trump's Facebook and Instagram accounts indefinitely, and at least until Inauguration Day. Zuckerberg wrote, The shocking events of the last 24 hours clearly demonstrate that President Donald Trump intends to use his remaining time in office to undermine the peaceful and lawful transition of power to his elected successor, Joe Biden. And beyond just Trump himself, there has been a huge purge of major accounts and pages tied to the Stop the Steal movement and the QAnon conspiracy theory from Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other platforms. Yeah, just look at this helpful graphic that the kind folks at Fox News put together of the platforms banning or restricting President Trump. So you got Twitch, Snapchat, and TikTok. They all banned Trump, which had to feel especially nice for TikTok <laughs> yeah. in particular, the, the company that Trump very successfully tried to ban from the U.S. Uh, to be clear, though, the TikTok ban is actually just a ban on, like, hashtag associated with the Capitol riot. I don't think Trump ever had an account on there. It would have been a little hypocritical if he did. No, he had a video on there where he just, it's just him realizing that his Twitter got suspended with the the song, Oh No, yeah. Oh No, 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 No. I want to see him sing a sea shanty. Yeah. Soon may the weatherman come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, similarly, uh, Pinterest is up there. I don't think Trump has a Pinterest account, but they, they've been limiting hashtags related to Stop the Steal. They've actually been doing it since right after the election, which, uh, good for you. Yeah, no, no, Melania's not going to be able to find her uh, Christmas decoration inspiration posts well, anymore. because as we know, Melania fucking hates Christmas. <laughs> Just fuck Christmas. Fuck Christmas. <laughs> um, Shopify... They took down the stores for the Trump campaign and the Trump organization for violating its policies on supporting violence. Reddit shut down the r slash Donald Trump subreddit. Uh, YouTube just clarified its rules on election disinformation, though more recently they actually, they blocked one of Trump's videos from going up and they gave uh, him a strike. strike. And then no one could comment on it. And uh, I just think it would be hilarious if Trump still had his Twitter, you know, he'd be on it being like, at, at, at Team YouTube. <laughs> they've, they've demonetized Keep Keemstar, me. please help. <laughs> Mr. Beast, can you help a guy out? Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, oh yeah, he's, he's banned from Spotify, too, I guess. Um, I don't know if they, they shut down his playlist or... Uh, I, I, think, I think what this was for is, like, if, in case yeah. he wants to start a podcast or something. Yeah, after, after everything. Which I would actually love to hear that. No, they, they, they don't want his playlist anymore. And they don't... They're like, Mr. Trump has listened to the, so- the song Fortunate Song, like, over a thousand times, yeah. and he still doesn't get it. No, the song's about you, sir. It's about, <laughs> uh, you know, Silver Spoon. No, I love it. And I love that YMCA. Yeah, YMCA. Yeah. Trump's so irony playlist. It's a song about, about men being men. <laughs> Banned. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, that, that, <laughs> that brings us finally to Parler, a service which thrives whenever big conservative accounts fall victim to basic moderation on more mainstream social media platforms. And Twitter and Facebook's actions with regards to Trump, of course, led to calls for a mass exodus to Parler. And for a day or so, Parler was at the top of the app charts for both Android and Apple. So take that, libs. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't long before Google went ahead and suspended Parler from the Play Store Oops. on the grounds that the Play Store term of use require that apps featuring user-generated content have moderation policies that remove posts that incite violence, which makes sense. Now, given all the screenshots of people on Parler inciting further violence in the wake of the Capitol riot and Trump's Twitter ban, they were clearly in violation of the TOS. Yeah, it's you really don't have to look far for examples of Parler's complete lack of moderation. No. There's entire subreddits devoted to just be like, hey, this person I'm pretty sure is threatening to murder like elected officials and do terrorism. Yeah, there's the, the uh, Parler Takes Twitter yeah. account, which was a, typically a bit more fun, but yeah. then got pretty serious yeah, in the Parler, past week. Parler Takes was mostly a Copium account, which yeah. I, I love Copium. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been just living solely off Copium for the last few months. I've gained yeah. like 10 pounds on all this Copium. <laughs> just too much Copium. But uh, yeah, a lot more serious in the past week or so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, not long after Google suspended Parler, Apple also suspended Parler for the same reasons, saying in a statement, we have always supported diverse points of view being represented on the App Store, but there is no place on our platform for threats of violence and illegal activity. Parler has not taken adequate measures to address the proliferation of these threats to people's safety. We have suspended Parler from the App Store until they resolve these issues. So, hmm, in both cases, Parler can get relisted on the App Store and the Play Store, if it just takes a more active role moderating its users' posts, seems like a small ask, but they're not going to do it. They're, no. they're actively refusing to do it. They're, they're calling this all an authoritarian attack on free speech. What is this? The USSR? What do they think Section 230 is? <laughs> oh, that, God, that's another thing. Yeah. Like, the, the 230 shit, no one knows what 230 is, but it's like, what, what was happening on social media this past week, all these bans and stuff, is literally, if Section 230 was completely gone, uh, that would, it would be <laughs> happening all the time because... Yeah. But it's just, it's just the new build the wall. It's like, yeah. he said that it's bad, so I'm going to regurgitate yeah. that because it pisses off the libs. But yeah, Section 2, it protects websites from being sued for content on it. Without Section 230, you'd be able to sue Twitter or Facebook for uh, anything bad that happened to you <laughs> yeah. related to anything someone posted on there. Yeah. Now, of course, anyone who already had the app downloaded to their device could continue using it. It's like with the kids in their Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, and if you did go to eBay and search for iPhone Parlor, there were tons of people trying to sell used phones with Parlor installed for stupid amounts of money. Though it doesn't seem like there were a whole lot of takers. Yeah. Uh, but also, anyone with a phone or computer could still just access Parlor completely fine because it existed on the web. It's a website. Except... Uh-oh, uh, Parler is hosted or was hosted on <laughs> Amazon Web Services, and AWS also has a TOS that's similar to Apple and Google. In an email to Parler, Amazon said, quote, Recently, we've seen a steady increase in this violent content on your website, all of which violates our terms. It's clear that Parler does not have an effective process to comply with the AWS terms of service. So by Sunday, Parler was officially offline with Parler saying that it would take at least a week for things to be back up and running again with a new host. Uh, that might not be entirely accurate. It might be uh, vastly overestimating their ability to migrate that website. Yes. And we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, in the meantime, Parler went ahead and uh, they sued Amazon, saying in their lawsuit filing, quote, AWS's decision to effectively terminate Parler's account is apparently motivated by political animus. It is also apparently designed to reduce competition in the microblogging services market to the benefit of Twitter. They're accusing Amazon of going out of its way to help Twitter, a uh, completely separate company. This was the real Bloody Sunday. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's another exciting 2021 lawsuit to look forward to this year. Throw it on the pile. Yeah. Now, adding insult to injury, before Parler was taken offline, Twitter user at DonkNB downloaded every single post on Parler, including metadata like the precise GPS locations of photos and videos posted to the site, which other sites are smart enough to automatically <laughs> yeah, remove. This is like, like, this is a problem you used to have on, like, Live journal 15 years ago no. is like, oh, you forgot to remove the EXIF data from your photos. But mm. it's been a standard thing on websites, especially social websites, for like at least a decade. It's like, yeah, 
It's a huge privacy yeah, violation. A, you don't yeah. want that shit being posted. Yeah, now she says she initially just intended to archive posts from January 6th, the day of the Capitol riot, since a lot of people who were at the riots were deleting posts that m might get them tr in trouble with the law. But uh, after downloading all the January 6th posts, uh, she proceeded to download what she says is 99.9% .9 of all the posts on Parler, adding up to around 80 terabytes of data. Yeah, and this was done, like, she set up basically a network where, like, anyone with a computer could, and some coding knowledge, could just go on GitHub and join in. So it's 80 terabytes, like, spread across a network, and they're also, like, they're hosting it on torrents and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's out there. Yeah, it's, it's out there. Yes. And uh, this was all very easy because, uh, according to Wired, quote, Parler lacked the most basic security measures that would have prevented the automated scraping of the site's data. It even ordered its posts by number in the site's URLs so that anyone could have easily programmatically downloaded the site's millions of posts. See, just like parler.com slash one, parler.com slash two. Well, let's get the website launched and then we'll worry about all the other stuff later. Yeah. Uh, Wired also quoted an expert who said, quote, this is like a computer science 101 bad homework assignment. The kind of stuff that you would do when you're first learning how web servers work. I wouldn't even call it a rookie mistake because as a professional, you would never write something <laughs> like this. Wow. Uh, so yeah, with a minimal amount of effort, Donk NB was able to just run a script that downloaded everything. Uh, th there's some confusion over what everything means here. Now, she only downloaded everything that was public on the site at the time she scraped it. But there's also unsubstantiated rumors of another much more serious security breach, including users' personal info and driver's licenses, which so far seems to be bullshit. Yeah, there but... hasn't been any, like, actual proof that this happened. Yeah. Still, though, the, G the GPS stuff that Parler failed to remove from public photos and videos is the kind of thing that could very easily identify otherwise anonymous Parler users, including Parler users who were uh, inside the U.S. Capitol last Wednesday taking photos and videos and essentially incriminating themselves. Yeah. Do it for the Parler. Anyways, uh, 80 terabytes is a lot of data. Mm -hmm. It's still being sorted through. Um, it's going to take a while, but the FBI is, of course, very interested in taking a look at it, uh, as are researchers who will likely be poring over this data for a long time. I don't think the FBI is going to have to go very far because I think that the unsubstantiated rumors about all of the uh, identifiable in uh, information might be coming from inside the government. Could but that's be. just an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, as for the parlor itself, uh, despite their claim that they would be back online in about a week, uh, AWS expert Corey Quinn explained on Twitter that it's uh, a lot more complicated than you might think. Quote, getting booted off of AWS is virtually unheard of. When people leave intentionally, the planning takes months. Execution can take years. It's a lot harder than you think for a few reasons. It takes time to move all of that data. There's a reason downloads take a while. But that's just the beginning. AWS doesn't just sell big empty computers, they offer higher level services, pre-configured databases, automatic video streaming, etc. These services aren't really directly compatible with other companies' offerings. Making what you built on AWS systems work elsewhere is super challenging. It's like trying to put a AAA game on a damn Nintendo Switch. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes a lot of yeah, planning. It's, it's going to come out of the other end. Uh... A little bit fucked up. Yeah. Uh, he continues, Parler claims they didn't use these higher level services. Taking that as true, there are still problems. Uh, the, the way AWS's services work, how you create them, how long that creation process takes, how you get the data onto them, they behave differently in AWS's world than elsewhere. A lot of assumptions about how the servers behave are baked into how Parler and any AWS hosted application are built. A lot of companies don't realize that those assumptions are there until they try to move. That's why migrations take months or years. Parler has 30 hours. Hey, he posted this before, like, because AWS did issue an ultimatum, just like Apple and Google did. They're like, moderate your users. Yeah. Make sure there's no death threats. You have a day. Like, we don't want to do this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, people are like, all right, cool. Well, uh, see you tomorrow. And they're like, eh, no, probably well, this not. This is serious. Anyway, regardless of whether Parler takes a week to come back, a year to come back, or just stays gone forever, the Parler user base still has several alternatives that they continue to flock to. Uh, there's, of course, Gab, which has been around even longer than Parler and is most known for being the social network of choice for the guy responsible for that mass shooting a few years back at a Pittsburgh synagogue. Uh, unfortunately, Gab seems like it might be just as much of a mess as Parler. Uh, Gab's like the... Parler's like the Twitter alternative. Gab was like the Reddit alternative, right? No. 
Uh, yeah, Gab was sort of a Reddit slash Twitter alternative. Okay. Um, I don't know. Anyway, apparently for a period of time on Monday, uh, going to Gab.com just logged you into random users' profiles. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like Gab <laughs> might be just as much of a fucking dumpster fire uh, as Parler. Yeah. Possibly even worse. Uh, then there's uh, Rumble. Uh, which I'm not even going to think. I'm just going to assume it's a, it's it's uh, Bumble for conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it apparently is more of a YouTube alternative and has a typo in the very first sentence of its Google playlisting. Quote, welcome to the Rumble video app, a video platform where you'll grow faster and never be censored for political of scientific content. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Off to a great start. And finally, there's MeWe, which looks like it's trying to just be Facebook, but without all the tracking. Uh, MeWe seems to be gaining new users simply because it's a social network that isn't Twitter or Facebook and not for any political reasons. And it sounds like they're actually at least trying to do content moderation while their user base expands pretty quickly. So MeWe probably isn't uh, a long-term solution for the MAGA crowd. Yeah, the CEO, he's just like, hey, it's cool that we're getting all these new users to our app that no one uses, but uh, also, like... uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to let that sh- Nazi shit on here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to remove it. So probably not going to be on MeWe very long. Hmm. Uh, anyways, this whole situation has, of course, led to a lot of debate over how much power big tech has. And not just among conservatives, because it actually is a pretty bad thing that the Internet and just communicating with other people is at this point just a uh, happens on a small handful of apps and websites and losing access to any one of them sort of cuts you off from the world. That's not good. Mm-hmm. And we've talked a lot about like the anti-competitive behavior that Facebook in particular has engaged in to create this situation. Um, but at the same time, free speech has limits both legally and ethically, and it's perfectly reasonable for these companies to not want to be associated with criminal activity or even just things that most people find objectionable. Uh, at the end of the day, these are private companies in a free market economy, and that's <laughs> you know that, that shit's just bad for business. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, before we get into even more tech news, it's time for a brief word from our sponsors who help the show stay online. Uh, that, we're going to start with Stitch Fix. Uh, does looking at your current cold weather wardrobe options give you a chill? Burr. Uh, it's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade that jacket. A Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick new pieces that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, send the rest back. It's the safest way to shop right now. Yeah. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included in your box. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep. And there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash newsday, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash newsday for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com slash newsday. And this episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon, which I lived in the entire break. My wardrobe at this point is like, (laughs) Pretty much entirely Stitch Fix and Mac Weldon. Yeah, uh, there are probably a lot of things that you'd like to leave behind in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the most important being your old underwear drawer. P.U. If you're rolling into the new year with the same bunching, chafing, and uncomfortable underwear, then you have to check out Mac Weldon. We've been on and on about Mac Weldon for years now, but it is true. Once you go Mac, you don't go back. <laughs> uh, the comfort and consistent fit of Mac Weldon socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, and active shorts definitely helped us get through 2020. And uh, they'll be getting us through 2021 as well. I have, over the course of two years, uh, weeded out all of my old underwear, and it is all Mac Weldon. Now. Yeah, yeah. They're comfy. I, and I, I can never go back. That's, that, that is true. Mm-hmm. Mac Weldon's men's essentials look great and feel great. From working out, going out, going to work, going on a date, whatever, Mac Weldon is for everyday life. They use a wide range of customized fabrics like silver, 18-hour, Air Knit X, Dry Knit, and Warm Knit that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. And with Weldon Blue, their totally free loyalty program, Level 1 gets you free shipping for life. 
Once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. Mack Weldon wants you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them and they'll still refund you. No questions asked. So for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Newsday and enter our promo code Newsday. That is MacWeldon.com slash Newsday. Promo code Newsday for 20% off. Mack Weldon, reinventing men's basics. All right, back to the news now. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one ban or cancellation or whatever you want to call it that was more of a footnote in the midst of all this other shit, but was very big news for the Twitch community in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, the PogChamp emote is gone. Yeah. So th the riots at the U.S. Capitol, yes, they have resulted in the removal of one of Twitch's oldest and most popular emotes, which uh, emotes are basically emoji specific to Twitch chat. Now, what could this tiny image of a guy making a funny face have to do with any of this? Uh, well, that guy is Ryan Gutex Gutierrez, a prominent gamer and commentator in the Street Fighter community, and he had some thoughts about the Capitol riots. Quote, will there be civil unrest for the woman who was executed inside the Capitol today, or will the hashtag MAGA martyr die in vain? The video will be aired soon on band.video and the resistance.video, and it sounds pretty gruesome. Uh, so, okay, definitely expressing sympathy for the woman who was shot and killed by Capitol Police, which, fine, uh, but also uh, seemingly supporting the rioters and encouraging further action from the Stop the Steal people in response to it, uh, which could be interpreted as encouraging further rioting in D.C. Uh, not so good. Yeah, so, I mean, compared to a lot of the insane shit that prominent Trump supporters have posted over the last week or so, this is pretty mild. Yeah. Um, but Gutex also spent much of 2020 spreading COVID-19 conspiracy theories. So it seems like this was kind of just the last straw for Gutex and Twitch. People have, ever since he's been spreading that COVID shit, people have been like, hey, Twitch, maybe... Uh... Poggers is a slur now. <laughs> anyway, following Gutex's tweet about the Capitol protests, uh, Twitch tweeted, we've made the decision to remove the PogChamp emote following statements from the face of the emote encouraging further violence after what took place in the Capitol today. We want the sentiment and use of Pog to live on. Its meaning is much bigger than the person depicted or image itself, and it has a big place in Twitch culture. However, we can't in good conscience continue to enable use of the image. We will work with the community to design a new emote for the most hype moments on Twitch. We don't want to get rid of Pog, but you, you can't use Poggers with the hard R. We're, we're, we're drawing it at that. This Capitol riot is, <laughs> it's, you know, it's really, it's cutting into all the hype moments here on Twitch. The P word. Uh, anyways, pretty much immediately, Twitch streamers started replying to those tweets with pictures of themselves making similar facial expressions to PogChamp and in a way to basically audition to be the new face of the emote. And currently, Twitch is cycling through a lot of them, changing the PogChamp emote every 24 hours, which is actually, it's a pretty cool solution that they could continue with indefinitely. Uh, unfortunately, it's also apparently led to each new face receiving tons of harassment online from people upset about Gutex losing the emote, and no surprise, the harassment has been especially bad for the women and people of color who have been temporarily PogChamps. It's just, a, it's a spotlight on every single day of just being like, all right, yeah. so let's go digging through some tweets. Yeah. Uh, They've definitely said something worse. It's funny because, like, up until this happened, like, Gutex, he didn't seem all that into the fact that he was Pog Champ. He's yeah. like, I have an actual career in the fighting game community, and everyone just knows me as this fucking emote. Like, I didn't even, like, agree to it. It was, like, Justin TV days, and, like, they, they posted the picture, and I was like, hey, cool, and I didn't know it was going to, like, balloon into this thing that is my entire identity. Yeah, much like Bean Dad. Uh, years and years and years from now when this guy like finally like dies ho you know we all hope in a warm bed surrounded by family members for everyone in the world but uh, they'll be like Pog Champ has died yeah. like no that's not I don't want that to be my legacy <laughs> Uh, now, in other news related to the events of last week and the people who inspired them, Sidney Powell, one of the attorneys who has been crusading for the past two months to overturn the results of the election and has had every single one of her lawsuits thrown out, has been sued by Dominion Voting Systems, the voting machines manufacturer that Powell and others in her orbit have repeatedly accused of fixing the election for Joe Biden. Powell, if you can't keep track of all the nut jobs on the Trump train, is the person who, along with Lynn Wood, is so unhinged and conspiratorial that even Rudy Giuliani cut ties with them a few weeks after the election and just pretended that they were never collaborators in the first place. I don't know them. It's like you stood on a stage with right them there. Like four days ago. Yeah, literally the, nah. last, the last image of you that exists is standing next to them. Nah, she's crazy. I, I've never met her, honestly. Best of luck to her, though. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, this, this lawsuit from Dominion against Sidney Powell, it seeks $1.3 
billion dollars in damages uh, on the grounds that she has irreparably tarnished their reputation and put their employees' lives in danger, which both on both counts seems to be Pretty totally, accurate. totally factual. Yeah, um, and it's not like they didn't warn her either. Uh, back in December, they sent letters to a bunch of people and organizations, including Powell, threatening to sue for defamation. And that's when news networks like Fox issued weird little segments where they basically claimed to have never accused Dominion of anything sketchy, and then just pretty much shut up about it after that. Absolved. Uh, Sydney Powell, she just kept going on with it though, and now that's yet another 2021 lawsuit that we have to look forward to, folks. The pile just got one lawsuit higher. The the one of the greatest and worst things about America is that like whatever attention someone gets, they just go full force and are like, "Well, it's my moment. Whatever got me here, I'm going to go 100% into it." Yeah. 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 We'll talk about Soho Karen on Weekly Weird News. I am I am so excited for that. I Love her. She's my favorite new character. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, and by the way, we, we haven't even gotten to the COVID news yet. Uh-huh. Uh, so just to quickly recap what's been going on for the last couple of weeks, there's, surprise, a new strain of COVID. A new that strain seems just to, dropped. Yeah, that uh, seems to have originated in the UK, and it's potentially a lot more contagious. More contagious, but apparently not more dangerous, which is... yeah. Just uh, uh, so- somewhat of a silver lining, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, there's also apparently two additional new strains originating in the U.S., which are also potentially more contagious. Now, the good news is that for now, experts uh, believe that the existing vaccines work just as well against the new strains, but also the vaccine rollout in the U.S. has so far been a complete fucking disaster it's, for every it's, state. It's insane. They're like they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be administering like one million doses a day. And it's like a hundred thousand. I think they got up to like two or three hundred thousand, but it's it's just like it's hilarious. Someone pointed out that uh, like New York City had like a smallpox outbreak in like like a hundred years ago, and they managed to inoculate like three million people in a month. Well, this, the Cuomo was like, if you, if one of those vaccines goes into an arm that yeah. isn't a direct healthcare worker working in the COVID wards, we are going to fine your company. Yeah, no, they're, like, they're, they, they're, you pull it out of the freezer and it goes bad within like a, a, an hour like or some I, shit. Yeah, no, the idea that the higher risk people should be getting the vaccine first is good. But like, also, they should just be giving the vaccine to as many people as possible. If you like, want it, get your name on this damn list. Yeah, like, it's it's insane that they're just like, all right, well, um, day's over. Uh, just throw out the doses. Yeah. Yeah, they just they just unleashed uh, a new like phase plan, phase <laughs> phase plan, <laughs> phase plan uh, uh, for LA. That's like tier one, tier one B, tier one C, tier one D, tier two. And it's like I'm looking at it. and I'm like, I'm never getting this. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm fully like resigned to the fact that I'm pro- I, I'm more likely to die from this virus b- before I get vaccinated. Yeah, like it's just not going to happen. There, LA has, LA County has like 15 million people in it. Also, I'm never getting the fucking vaccine. Speaking of like unsecure web shit, like one of the things I've <laughs> look, I don't know, but one of the things that I've seen on on uh, like local subreddits and posts is a link went out that was supposed to be for healthcare workers to sign up to get their vaccines, and apparently that link uh, just went out to a bunch of people and started spreading on Facebook, and people would click it, and they were able to go get their vaccines because no one was checking proof of employment or anything like that. And it's like, it's hard to get mad at these people because at least they fucking want it. At least people are getting vaccinated. And more people getting vaccinated means the chance of more people getting infected goes down. So it's hard to get mad at them for it. (sighs) Anyways, uh, yes, the vaccination shit, it has absolutely not happened nearly as fast as it should. And it doesn't bode well for the future. And with a disease that's likely to start spreading a lot faster than it already is because of the new contagious versions. Look, things aren't going great. Not great. Yeah, there were 300,000 new cases in a single day last Friday. Yesterday, there were over 4,400 deaths, a new record that will almost definitely be broken before the month is over. Mm -hmm. There are more people hospitalized with COVID right now, right this second, than at any point during the entire fucking pandemic. So shit is fucked. It's not getting unfucked nearly as quickly as it should be. It may never be unfucked. Mm -hmm. This is just as much the fault of local and state governments as it is Just everyday people who've completely stopped giving a shit. I mean, just look at this fucking crowd of University of Alabama students and fans just just crammed together in the street, shoulder to shoulder, unmasked after their football team won the championship over the weekend. Roll Tide, baby. Yeah. And they're going to spread it to their family members when they go home to fuck them. (laughs) Sorry, I had to do it. 
<laughs> you have to, yeah. Had to do it to him. Uh, anyways, in other covidiacy, a pharmacist and conspiracy theorist in Wisconsin was arrested at the beginning of the month for intentionally removing over 500 vaccine doses from a freezer to just render them useless. Yeah, you can't even depend on people whose literal job is providing the vaccine for the virus to not be a 5G Bill Gates microchip nut job. And in uh, some, some less malicious but still incredibly stupid news, a hospital in Northern California had a huge COVID outbreak among its staff after a COVID-infected staffer wore a fan-powered inflatable Christmas tree costume to the Christmas party for the company, which obviously sprayed the virus everywhere and may have infected more than 40 people and even killed one person. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, back to the riot at the U.S. Capitol. This shouldn't surprise anyone, but when lawmakers were all crammed into a bunker while their chambers and offices were raided, a bunch of Republicans refused to wear masks. And now at least three Democratic lawmakers have tested positive, one of whom is a 75-year-old cancer survivor. So, great job, dipshits. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this episode is already way too long, and we didn't even get to the fact that CES was this week. In spirit, I guess. Are they actually doing it in Vegas? Uh, no, I mean, it's, okay. like, it's like how E3 was. Yeah. CES, it usually sucks, though. Uh, so it's probably not a huge loss. Uh, I'll spoil it for you. Uh, there's some new TV tech. A refrigerator will suck your dick now. The Razer has a, a face mask. Yeah, Razer <laughs> has a face mask, and it, ha it does have the RGB. It looks pretty cool, Yeah, actually. it has the RGB lights. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, probably not a huge loss that uh, not a lot of CES news. But if there's anything particularly noteworthy from CES, uh, we will cover it next week. Oh, and apparently the CIA just released a bunch of UFO documents. And we haven't seen anything specific uh, that's, like, obviously risen to the top yeah. uh, from that. So it's probably just a bunch of boring bullshit. But we'll keep you posted, and we might cover it on Weekly Weird News if there's anything good there. Yeah, there's a few other stories that I was going to put in this episode. No, like the, the the chastity cage the, the for men. The cup spilleth uh, over this week. Yeah, it's. I'm sorry, guys. We like, we're at. Uh, I mean, it's not t 40 minutes. Anyway, you've got shit to do. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll leave you with that. But great, great to be back. Mm -hmm. We'll see you soon for news dump and weekly weird news, and uh, off to a great start with 2021, baby. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, do all the things, and. Uh, Watch our first video back because uh, that, that'll bring you up to speed in case you haven't been watching or listening to anything. Just watch our most recent video, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.